So, welcome to the bevy. Um, you would think this is just a little shake hole on the mountain. In fact, down here there's a cave, Ooh, be very careful, known as M10. So this is a little um, 20 meter deep shake hole. And at the bottom is a lot of ice. And we actually pull that ice out if we don't have any rain for a week or two. We start running out of drinking water. Um, but usually, you climb down this more easy route and walk down into the bivy itself. The first thing you might notice is that there's tarpaulins. That's all that sort of green stuff at the back. There's a large tarpaulin in the front. And the tarpaulins are for collecting our rainwater. So the rainwater runs off these intricately connected objects. And it's collected in these bright blue barrels that we've brought up over the years. We mostly drank most of this. This is known collectively as the sail. Um, it catches a lot of wind, but it also catches a lot of rain. So right now it's been intentionally collapsed. And this barrel, hopefully, is completely full, about 20 litres of water. Right at the back of the bivvy, there's another barrel that just collects water sort of dripping off the floor and the hose pipe to decant. So in this corner of the bivvy, we have all the serious caving hardware. So we see two cavers, hard at work playing with the cave links. Hello. Um, are they actually downstairs with one of them right now? We don't know. We don't know, okay. <laughs> so just send our general broadcast. Um, there's also first and second aid over here. Usual piles of rope. Nice. All these down drums whoop, are full of metal work. So when people are getting ready in the morning, mm -hmm. this side of the bivvy is a hive of activity as people fettle and prepare a kit. Fair, All of this stuff, of course, is carried up from about a thousand meters below us by hand, more or less. So, other bits of the bivvy. So over here we have our collection of petrol and decanting, which is kept slightly away from the food and the metal work. And then here we have our large down drums, which have recently been relabeled with these super colorful duct tape stickers, which is where a lot of our food's stored. So in there are all the sort of bulk powders, the, um, the rice, the flour, the dried vegetables. Um, these smaller barrels we often use for underground food, like cave snacks, uh, various bits and bobs. Here we have all our mess tins that we add in the evening and our sort of billy cans and random bits and bobs we bought over the years. Oh, nicely okay. washed and left out on rinse. So when it rains, it feels like it might rain soon. This will all be nicely rinsed off. So this is the stone circle with our fire. There's a petrol lantern, a common petrol lantern hanging up. So in the evening, you find sort of a dozen to 20 people sitting around here on these bits of cump, which are actually letters for babies. Unfortunately, the letters sometimes fall out and so they end up duct tape back in. So we probably spent more on duct tape fixing these and then the original like 15 quid we spent on them. Um, here's the laptop. This is Tangy's MacBook Air. And we always have a laptop up here for entering survey data. So we can actually look at what we're exploring as we're exploring it and understand how it is in relation to other bits of the cave. Um, and this strange metal pedestal for the burnt pine cones is, is half of a kelly kettle. So we started using these, I guess about seven years ago now, and they've actually massively reduced our petrol consumption. So it turned out we were burning a lot of petrol that were carrying up the hill to make tea. Whereas instead we now send people off to collect pine cones, put them in these things, heat up the water, and then store it in these thermoses and use it, for instance, to start off supper without having to heat all of the pasta water by hand. So here's our cooking area, which has been sort of nicely leveled off. Cook seat, various collections of flavour sachets and so on. See, so underneath, this is probably the most sheltered spot in the bivvy. So when it really, really rains, everyone ends up sort of sitting back here as rain comes flying in over there. And the stove is evidently on and the pressure cooker is hissing because Tangy is cooking up some beans for supper. Um, so as we go now into the back of the bivvy, it's going to get darker, so I'm not sure how well the footage is going to come out. But this is collectively known as the cage. It's about a metre cubed, made out of old, I guess, Force 10 tent poles and um, chicken mesh wire to keep the mice away from our collections of snackage food. So there's a little bit of bread in there, there's various objects. Not very much in there right now, which probably means people haven't been doing very many carries. Um, on top of the cage, 
are the guitar and the ukulele that we currently have up here and various other things that like being kept dry such as surveys and our logbook. So also in the back of the bivvy is a nice dry spot. So here we have our collection of rechargeable batteries. We keep topped up the solar panels. We have our survey books, ammo tin of survey instruments, various bits of bobs. There's a drill hanging out, it's probably chilly enough to be down the cave yesterday. And other items that need to be kept roughly dry. Big old Peli case, which has a normal laptop in it, which died after the lightning strike, um, very interestingly. And then right up into the bivvy is a place we don't go very regularly, so sort of digging materials. And eventually, oh, nearly fell over. You can probably see the back of the bivvy is a dry stone wall that breaks into another shake hole. Um, bits of tarpaulin, this is where we store the solar panels over winter, various liquids, um, vegetable oil for cooking, the Dettol for the ship pit. And that is more or less it to the bivvy. And here's our <laughs> vanishingly small collection of fresh items. We're down to about, I guess, a dozen onions and all the potatoes have been eaten, which is very sad because the chips were very nice. Um, so a key part of actually organizing the expedition is the bivvy logbook. So it's just a standard lab notebook, possibly liberated from some department at Imperial College. Um, and in here, we have useful things such as numbers. We have our printed out copy of our online calendar about when people are planning to fly out. Next to King contacts, quotes, and then page after page of write-ups. A lot of it cave exploration. We end up with like grade one surveys going in here, descriptions, leads, and that's how we sort of communicate effectively. And as well as this sort of continuous log that we make, um, Oh, some particularly nice surveys, probably from Tangy. Yeah, so that's Hammerhead, so that's the stuff we were doing yesterday. Okay, right to the back of the logbook is the all important call out board. So these are all of the trips currently going on, people who have crossed out where they've come out. Who's on the others' loads today? Loads of people underground, yeah, well, everyone. I mean, there's just three of us running up top. And yeah, so nearly two weeks in, we more or less filled a full set of about sort of 30 trips and done a lot of caving. And yeah, and so this is the bivvy, where on expedition you certainly seem to end up spending an awful lot of time when you're not in your tent sleeping. <laughs>